Well, hello everybody, it's Monday morning again as we're heading into the Easter break and of course, uh, I believe it's Wednesday, Passover, if you are of the Jewish faith, commences. So, uh, all round, uh, a nice holiday environment and we're of course we're in the middle of Ramadan. We are. Which is, but is that, has Ramadan and the, uh, I'm led to believe that people can get quite cranky over that time because they're not eating and they're fasting or whatever. Has that contributed to the Saudis' decision this morning on oil prices? One wonders. <laughs> I, I really don't know. But yes, this morning we've had an OPEC plus decision to drop production of barrels by 1.2 million a day or something yeah. like that, which has not been viewed favourably. And it's very odd because it's out of context. Normally they have a meeting discuss it and then make an announcement. Well, the meeting doesn't actually start until today. So it's not clear what's going on. I think they've come there. in all guns blazing. The Saudis have basically said, yeah, yeah we're dropping production. This is what we want to do. This is what we are doing. But I wonder if they're just tired and hungry. Poor loves. It could be grumpy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, going mm. without food for long periods of time could uh, could do that. Um yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, one million barrels a day sounds like a lot, but in the big scheme of things, it's not massive, is it? Well, a barrel's 50 gallons. So 50 gallons is 200 and, well, 250 litres. So it's 250 million litres a day less. Fair bit, but not... Yeah, it's not I just, killer for I the, just remember when we killer, were reporting yeah. on it before and, and something had moved up or down by a million barrels, people went, well, yeah, that's more... I don't think it's a killer amount. Yeah, it's more sort of a, a signal, really, rather yeah, than... Yeah. yeah. I think they're saying we want more money. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a signal to say, yeah, we want to make more money out of this. So here yeah. we go. So, yeah, that's oil. What else has been in the news? Well, we've got, obviously, AI is in the news a lot. Mm. So we've gone... We went very quickly into the hype cycle. And you know how they say when new technologies come out, this cycle yeah. of getting everything in is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Well, we've gone from the hype cycle of AI, which probably only lasted about five weeks, right, once it came out. And we now seem to be careering down the other side with no no person less than Elon Musk saying, uh, oh, we've got a pause here. We've got to the thing pause. Is, is, that, is that people don't seem to understand. ChatGPT is a brand chat gpt mm, company, has yeah. one form of what's called an llm a large language model yeah large language models are not the whole of ai so all the fuss has been created because it looks like it's white collar jobs that disappear this time yeah. with the technology because if you go on to chat gpt as an example and say write me a 2000 word story about a dentist it will write you a 2000 word story yeah. about a dentist it's passable yeah but um, that's not. I, I don't personally don't consider that AI. But I would if I was a bit, be a bit worried if I was a lawyer. Put it that way. Yeah, lawyers, reporters, mm. um, and they talk about accounting a lot, don't they? Accounting is probably going yeah. to be one of the biggest um, uh, areas to be affected. But yeah, so we've seen a general call in terms of AI to sort of halt um, progress. Good luck with that. Can't ever see that you working. Can't, you can't uninvent technology. Yeah, you can't right? uninvent stuff and. Guess what? You know, it's like water seeping through gaps. Someone will always find a way. If there's an advantage to be had, somebody else will do it. We talked a lot about um, fossil fuels, didn't we, a few months yep. ago? And you know, well, you know, you know, the big companies, the BPs, the Shells, and Texacos, you know, are not not expanding, and they may be selling off, um, you know, fields that aren't as quite as economic. Well, guess who goes and buys those? People who don't have as much public exposure and who don't tell you what they're doing. So. Yeah. Where would you rather be, right? The Ineos, the guy, I can't remember, Jim Ratcliffe, mm -hmm. he's done incredibly well out of buying businesses that everybody else said were yeah. complete. Oh, I don't want to oh, don't want to be nasty, don't want to be involved in that. It's nasty. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll take it for twenty percent of its real value. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, fair play to people. Yeah. Same thing will happen with AI. You can't uninvent it. No. And then and, and literally actually banned it, didn't they, on Friday? I didn't really yeah. get to the bottom of it. Oh, there was a data leak. There was a data there leak. There was a yeah, data yeah. leak. But what information are you putting into ChatGPT? Well, I think the thing is with ChatGPT is if you pass it information in, it will it will use it as part of the model. So if you uh, say, okay. um, "Hi, my name's Peter. I'm uh, fifty, age fifty. My house is worth this. My financial circumstances right, right. are. Can you advise me on a budget?" Click. It, would, yeah, it okay. says, "Oh, that's nice. Quite a bit of information. I'll advise him on a budget." 
there's your budget, Peter, and in return, yeah. I'll keep your information and I'll just store it yeah, okay. for future use as questions that yeah. people like yeah, you. Yeah. Like, la, 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 so la, you're la, building la. up the knowledge pool, but yeah. it actually... Okay. You're, in a, you're in effect constantly retraining yeah. the model. Um, and in fact, as, as you know, I do... Uh, I, was, I was also reading that... Because once you start retraining a model, you have to keep retraining it. And the costs of retraining them are quite significant. You yeah. need to, in the cloud about $35,000 a month. And I uh, happened to chance upon a report the other day, a cost report, where somebody had retrained the whole model for three questions in a frequently asked questions model because they didn't understand the difference between having the model retrained and using the model to reference the answers. For right, three. Okay. <laughs> so I suspect there's about to be an awful lot of companies getting bills through for millions of dollars and going, yeah. Are we even using chat yeah, GPT in the cloud? No, no, you're not. But and that's where perversely you go back to somebody and say, just write me some FAQs. Yeah, mate. just write me some FAQs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And also, I don't know if you read, but one they say one of the currently the most uh, urgent jobs is what's called prompt engineering, because what people don't understand is large language models can't answer questions. No. They can only respond to prompts that they are given. So prompt engineering is the, the art of being able to understand questions and, turn them into and break it down right. into, okay. s- t- into answers. And at the moment, a good prompt engineer in uh, California, about $350,000. Wow. And you don't even have to have been to university to do it. Yeah. Prompt engineering. There you go. Job for the next few years. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds good. Yeah, I wouldn't mind giving it a go. Um, what else? Savings running out. Yeah, savings That's, running out oh. seems to be... So inflation is still there. Markets really famously can only really think about one thing at a time. So they've been thinking about banks probably for the last month and probably not so much thinking about banks now. There are some rumours that another European bank might or might not be uh, close to getting a... Wobbling. Uh, a wobble. Um, but I think we're not getting to where we got to in, in, in 2008. So the markets have sort of stopped worrying about that. So what are they thinking about now again? Thinking about um, inflation. Numbers that came out on Friday were sort of there or thereabouts. So inflation is still here. It still needs to be reduced. Uh, but people's spending is tightening. We've seen that over the last six, eight uh, plus months. But what we're also seeing now is that level of savings that people saved up over the pandemic is dropping now significantly. Yeah, yeah. So but it has money, to, right? I mean, sooner or later, people yeah. people have got to start spending it. And especially now you're being, people are being pushed back to the office. I don't, yep. that, that little nudge that they were given earlier on this year actually now seems like a Two yeah, hands I, I think now if you if you if they want you back in the office, you're you're going basically. You know, come oh, yeah. back in. We need you to do this stuff. And a lot of the policies, and you know, it's easy for us to say sitting here, but this is sort of hopefully helpful to other people. Having been through a number of recessions, is it all gets a bit draconian again, right? And yeah. because people are thinking about the bottom line, and people will be cutting expenses, they'll be cutting yeah. travel budgets, they'll be cutting back on um, staff, you know, and they'll expect you to do a day's job for a day's pay. Absolutely. And I mean, and then around that with the inflation, certainly in the UK, don't know about in the US, but you've got the absurdity of things like one day's parking at a station costing you nine pounds, yeah. nine pounds, twelve dollars to park your car yeah. so you can go to do the job and then another 50 pounds for your ticket. Yeah. And and again, to me, this is a t- is a tax on working and it disproportionately affects the young mm. and the lower paid. Yeah. You're on 200,000 a year. Yeah, you can pay your 50, yeah, 60 yeah, pounds a day yeah. no big deal. You're on 30,000 a year. That's a huge chunk of your wages just to get to work. Then you go in, you can't take sandwiches anymore. Nobody has got the time to do that, I yeah. suspect. Then you're up for 15 pounds a day lunch. Before you know it, actually, here's the irony, you're probably better off just doing a little bit of work from home on a on a side hustle. Yeah. The net result to you is no different. Yeah, I think it's the young disproportionately, as you say, because you, if you get a job, particularly if you get a, a job in London, we know uh, a couple of uh, younger people who've done that. You're you're on a salary that one won't let you live anywhere yep. close to London, so therefore you've got to get the train. But the salary won't let you get the train more than a couple of days a week, right? Yeah, because yeah. of just the cost of it. So it works while we're in this hybrid zone. As soon as you move out of that hybrid zone, it doesn't work anymore. The model, doesn't work the model all, breaks. Yeah. And I've read that about New York. I follow a guy on mm. uh, on YouTube who looks at apartments in New York. 
I am absolutely stunned at how little you get in New York yeah. for five thousand dollars a month. Yeah, which is you're, enormous it's, amount of money. It's an enormous amount of money, and yeah. you're talking about four or five people having to share one bathroom. Yeah. I mean, sorry, this something does have to change here yeah. about this model. Yeah, it's, it's really wrong. Not really working. So in in Europe, we see we've seen some strange numbers on inflation. Uh, we've seen Spain dropping. We've seen Germany sort of staying where they are. But I think you know we know this has got a long way to run. And and if you know we said back at the end of last year, if there is a recession, it is Q three or Q four this year that you'll you'll see it because mm. these things just take time to kick in. That's just the way it works, right? Yeah. It- and you get lots of full storms. So, you know, we are, we've seen one of the biggest rises this quarter, uh, quarter ended on um, Friday in the NQ, than we have for the past decade. Yeah. Now, obviously flattered by the fact that it went down significantly back end last year. There was a big, you know, tech, everyone's out. Tech of is love dead. With tech. tech is dead. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you look at that and you go, whoa, we've gone, some, yeah. you know, you go from a bull market to a bear market back to bullish feeling. But the market just feels it's waiting for one decision either way and it's off right it's off it, and it could go either way to yeah. be blunt i mean so the way i figure it is this everybody now is pretty much forced to contribute to a pension that wasn't the case even if you go back to 2008 yeah. so 14 years since the last the late the last big dump yeah if you go back to dot com bubble 2000 now nearly a quarter of a century ago yeah People were not being forced to put no. money into a pension. And a lot of people weren't, were they? And no. I, I knew very few people that were putting money into yeah. a pension in, in 2000. Yeah. In 2008, I knew a few more. But now, people our age are going, oh my God, we haven't got a big enough pension, yeah. pension pot. So if people are forced to put money into pensions, what's going to happen? The yeah. only thing that can happen yeah. in the long run is that those stocks rise. It has to happen because there's nowhere mm. else to put your money. If you're an investor, you know, if you're a yeah a big fund and you, you're Vanguard, you've got 30 million people around the world contributing an average of five, uh, $500. That's a lot of money you've got to place. You've got to do something with it. Yeah, and you're an index right. tracking fund. Yeah. So you've got to put it into the you've index. Got to, you've got to put it into So if you're track. out there and you're thinking of stopping your contributions, yeah. my only suggestion, and this does not constitute financial advice in any way at all, my personal approach is, you have to just keep paying in. Don't try yep. and time it. Don't think, oh, I'll put it in a savings account and I'll wait for the day that it... you can't do it. You've just got to keep putting it in, hold your nose. Don't look at the value Don't of look it. Don't at it, yeah. And just keep and knowing that in the long run it will yeah. outperform and, and something. it's literally something like that that you don't look at. And in 20 years' time, you'll go, oh, well, I'm glad I've got that. Yeah, I'm glad I've got that. Glad I, I might only that. have 100,000, yeah. but it's 100,000 that I wouldn't have had yeah. if I'd have put it in a savings account because it would probably be 15,000 yeah. yeah, or something exactly. like that. And the beauty with a lot of those index tracking funds is that you're reinvesting the dividends. Yep. So, um, which you don't get on ETFs. So it's worth looking at the difference between those two. Um, but yeah, so what else is going on? China. So China is sort of recovering, as we know. We've had. Uh, some good manufacturing numbers and some not so good manufacturing numbers. And we've talked a lot about people saying, oh, it's un- there's this uncoupling going on. But where were Ray Dalio and uh, Tim Cook over the weekend then? Oh, no idea, but Beijing Development Conference. Beijing. So, I mean, Tim Cook, we know Apple's fortunes are heavily tied into um, China. <laughs> China. When I want to say heavily tied. They are completely they tied are completely. Into, I was going to say it's not heavily. Tied into they're they're China. making like two iPhones in India yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, you know, Ray Dalio, hedge fund manager, extraordinary manager. manager. I mean, he's the guy, actually, who's, <laughs> who, interestingly, go and look at him on YouTube. He's a very, very clever guy. But he's basically saying China is going to take over the world, right? Um, yeah, he is. But I still think there's a population problem in China. But but maybe they've taken over the world before that population problem becomes a real yep. problem. That's the... I mean, we often get around to conflicts on this discussion, don't we? And, um, you know, the, the crisis in Ukraine has shown that basically if we, the Western powers, had to go into a similar sort of combat situation. <laughs> I don't, we, don't think so. <laughs> which, we're not, which clearly no one's planning on doing. We would run out of missiles in a week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. you imagine facing... And then we'd have to ask China to ship them to us. Because <laughs> yeah, we, we, we exactly. don't own any of the key parts. We'd say, look, we know we're in a war yeah. against you. You've got any chips. You've got any yeah. chips you can let us have <laughs> for these missiles. So you imagine fronting up to the People's Republic Army, which... 
totals, I don't know, 2 million people or something yeah, 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 like that. Yeah, 2.4 yeah. million people. I think there's an easy solution here because we're not quite where we were. Well, we're going to get a bit geopolitical in me. We weren't quite where we were back in the late 1930s, are we? I mean, um, America are very excited about Taiwan. Me, I'm not very excited about Taiwan. Are you excited about Taiwan? Well, I don't want to see them invaded by the Chinese. No. No. But, but you've been to am China. I, am I prepared to... A number of times. Yeah. It's a nice country. It's People nice, are nice. Nice enough. People are nice. Just don't say... I mean, you'll be in jail. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, you're, only from what you've said, though. Well, you'll, you'll be in jail <laughs> straight away for the things, the comments you made against them. Um, no, I don't... I, Look, I think when push comes to serve, the Chinese know, and which is what I think they're discovering from Ukraine, mm. you can probe. So just as the yeah, Americans have got a proxy war, the Chinese are having a proxy war. They're now by saying, yeah, well, you know, yeah, we, we see how this is. Yeah, it's I mean, they've been having from, a, a full-on digital war for years, haven't they? We've, full-on digital but, yeah, war yeah. for years. Uh, but I think that they've also recognised that I don't think the Americans are about to send troops up against the no, Chinese if they do take Taiwan. And I don't I don't know how much uh, defence capability the Taiwanese have got, but they'd be steamrolled. Yeah, of course they will. Yeah. Simple as that, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean... Yeah, and it would be really messy. Very, very messy. Yeah. I just don't understand why the Chinese want to do it. That's the only thing I don't understand. I do, to me, like, you're taking over the world anyway, right? Why do you need to... Putin... Don't blame Putin for it. Well, I'm just saying. Putin's nothing Put to do with it. They're totally different people. Putin has the same goal. Yeah, right? I, I, yeah I don't know. It's What's the common factor between those two people? I think they're basically both lifetime presidents. Lifetime presidents. Very yeah. little yeah, Mr. Uh, discussion around what they want to do because they can just do it. I would like to point out on behalf of myself that the views Peter expresses are entirely his own. And that if you're uh, watching Mr. G and you're watching Mr. Putin, you're nothing to do with me. I will give you his address. You don't even have to torture me for it. <laughs> so there we go. Um, no, I think it's, yeah. Uh, I don't even know. They, what do they need to have a... A shooting war for they've won the economic war, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Although I did see a beautiful article about they're, Chinese electric cars spontaneously combusting in large numbers. Oh, I'm sure they're, they're all <laughs> sorts apparently of they just problems. they just literally blow yeah, yeah, up yeah. in the middle of the. Uh, there was an interesting uh, analogy being drawn with the Ottoman Empire and the Chinese Empire, mm. which is basically the Ottoman Empire got to the point where that before they took over, one of the reasons they took over was they felt that everybody else was decadent and not deserving mm. of where they were. And there was a discussion around that feels where China feels like the US is. Oh, really? Yeah. And all that's left of that whole empire are those little things that you put linen in at the bottom of beds. Ottomans. Oh, Ottomans, right. That's the only thing that is retained from that. Well, Turkey is pretty Ottomanish, isn't it? I suppose, yeah, I suppose yeah. so, yeah. Big but no, look, I, th I but that's also what happened in Victorian times, wasn't it? People think that 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 the UK has always had this staid Victorian image. It's not true. Before Victoria decided on it, Britain was a hotbed of opium and yes, yeah, Lord no, knows what. Yeah, so yeah, you're absolutely right. when, when the pendulum swings one way, yeah. it then must swing the other way. And I think you're starting to see that with yeah, the sort of the moral element, the huge back. numbers yeah. of genders that there are now available yeah. to everybody. At some point, I think people are just going to go, we've, we've had enough. But I don't know about Taiwan. I hope it doesn't kick off, but yeah. I suspect it probably could. But, you know, we're in what, day 405 Four hundred and five is it today of um, Ukraine? Ukraine, yeah. it's not even on the front page of the news anymore. <clears throat> well, except today that the oh, um, with that big bomb in Moscow, the blogger. Yeah, yeah. but Which, it's you know it it has now gone into day to day trench mm. style warfare. It is no longer driving no. very many things. So quite sad, really. Yeah, but um, we've only got a couple of minutes to go. So what else do you want to cover? Japanese vending machines, I see, is on oh, your agenda. Yes, Japanese clever vending things. Machine. Japanese vending machines. They love a vending machine in Japan. They love everything in Japan, and, and they have some very strange things in vending yeah, machines. Let's not go there. We won't talk that about that. Will just get us banned. But this is a new vending machine with a new strange thing in in the north of the country. What is in the end of the vending machine? Taiwanese soldiers. Nope. No, nope. God knows. Bear meat. 
Bear meat. Bear meat. And apparently it's wow. going down a storm. People are getting, Flipping people from it. Tokyo are sending people to the bear meat machine to get meat to send to them. Wow. <laughs> well, apparently bear meat doesn't get tough when it gets older, so the article said. Um, oh. But where are the Chinese, get, oh, sorry, the Japanese getting bears from? Have they got yeah. a lot of bears oh, yeah, in the yeah, country? Yeah, in the north. Yeah, very, very, wow. very mountainous, That's very horrible. forested. Yeah. Oh, well, it's man. bears that have been um, <laughs> killed bears under are- a... Like a hunting license. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah then I'm sure. And it I is. don't think they just jam same as the whales. Yeah, don't think they just jam them in the machine hole. Oh, so you don't get a whole bit? <laughs> no, you don't. No, you get like little like with slithers. Its... Yeah, yeah. Well, that's horrible. <laughs> oh, that's really bad. I don't like that. It's the same with the. Oh, we're only killing whales for scientific purposes. Yeah. The scientific purpose of eating them because they're nice. Yeah, they're not that nice. They're only whales. Um, I don't like it. I've never Nor- had it in Norway once. Did you? Yeah. No, I wouldn't eat anything like that. I think whales are amazing creatures. Yeah. No, no, I wouldn't do anything. Like that. Oh, flipping it. Greenpeace, if you're watching, I'll give you his address. Well, it's Norway, mate. You can't blame the Norwegians for what you well, eat. <laughs> I wouldn't. No, I couldn't. Eat, I don't want to eat anything like that. Uh, no. The other thing I was going to mention was deal making. Deal making is. <sighs> so this doesn't help the whole banking um, no. sector, obviously, because that's where they make a lot of money in M and A. Mergers, acquisitions, and deal making that has been very, very flat, and well, it's been down this quarter significantly. Yeah. So, well, it um, di- it kind of started dying off middle of last yeah. year, and now it's almost come to a grinding. Yeah, halt. I think it's going to be a tough time for banks, right? It's going to be a tough time for banks. Tough two years, tough two yeah. years, I think. Tough couple of years, probably a tough time for shadow banking, as we've talked about before. So, private equity firms, venture capital firms, you're probably going to see a couple of those go uh, barely up, and then the question will be: Does that pull anything down with it? Does that you know, mm. have any links back into the core banking sector? Probably does, but does it then have an impact in that core banking sector as well? Reset the clock, and the clock gets reset to, it's just a question of where, isn't it? Yeah. Like, as with yeah. every banking crisis, as with every run into inflation, as with all of these things, it's, yeah. do we go back to 2014? Do we go back to 1978? Yeah. Yeah. Yada, yada. Exactly. But, you know, companies still need to survive. People yeah. still need to eat stuff. People are still going to make stuff. People still want to go out and spend money with friends, family, have fun, etc. So, you know, the economies are still going to move forwards. It's going to contract probably relatively tightly for a bit. But, you know, let's see. Just last week, I think, we've gone up 150 points almost on the, S- yeah. on the S&P. Well, maybe the market doesn't end up contracting because or uh, people don't want to work, right? Mm. I mean, the, so many of my friends of similar age to me, they're retiring now and they're just saying, look, I'm not going to go back to work because I'm taxed out of existence. Mm. So they they would rather live on twenty five thousand a year, yeah, do their hobbies, than work for seventy five thousand a year and make a net thirty thousand. Why not? Why would you? Why would you want to? Yeah, want to work well, when that? you get so to I the think point that, where your got, marginal tax is. There's a whole increasing. series of things, yeah. s- series of dynamics that come into play now that possibly you haven't had in the past. But um, in terms of banks. This time it isn't different. It isn't going to be any different than it ever has been. Once you start to see a run on one bank, yeah, there's nothing there. second and a third and a yeah. fourth, and then the government has to step in. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Well, you change. can't prevent a run on a bank. No, can no, you, it's by impossible. definition, and because of social media, as we saw with, uh, you know, SVB going, the first one that toppled, it just accelerates, right? And all yeah. that, and then, and since then, a lot of people have been taking their deposits and putting them into the money markets. You saying SBV has reminded me of the other SBF, Sam Bankman Fraud. Oh, yes. And um, apparently, he's, I'm, not, I'm not sure what, the, I don't think we have this word in the UK, arraigned. Yeah, no, arraigned. no I, I, we don't, I don't have think that we word. have that. No. Well, apparently, this is the week that he's being arraigned okay. on his next set of charges. Because, the, and I think his, if I were his mother and father, I'd be thinking now, ooh, maybe we should come clean. Because they're saying that 800 million seems to have gone their way. Oh my that word. that seems to be the next set of charges. Right. That, that of this 2.6 billion that he can't <clears throat> remember moving out because his Excel spreadsheet was accidentally yeah. deleted, 800 million seems to have gone to his parents. So I, sus- I suspect that family could come away with a world record tariff of 450 years in prison between yeah. the three of them. That's going to be. I if think that's going to be really if it ugly. Happens, all right. I mean, you look at. You look at the pharmaceuticals, the Sackler family, and still, yeah, none of them have gone to jail. Not even close. No, no, no. 
I mean, yeah, they've lost some money, but they would just make more drugs, right? Yeah, but that's, yeah. But that's not outright theft, though, is it? Well, it's, it's very illegal killing, it's flogging something you know kills people and telling well, people it doesn't and it's yes, not but, addictive. Uh, yeah, but, but that's, it's not theft. Let us be very clear. They didn't it's theft of life. They didn't. St oh, come on. <laughs> uh, you don't read the thing on the packet. That's your problem. The fact that it's in sort of point zero no, zero the point. The thing on the packet oh. didn't have the right clause on because the um, FDA had let it through. Oh. Well, yeah. yeah. They should be in prison as well. People in the FDA let it. Anyway, yeah, we could go on. We could go on, and um, that would be kind of cause. Listen. So that is it for this week. Have a fantastic Easter yeah, if you celebrate. Easter. If not, fabulous Passover. If not, then look forward to Eid. You've only got a couple of weeks yep. to go now. So And then big data out this week, but bizarrely on um, Good Friday. On Good Friday. Yeah, when non-farms is out. Yeah, you can't, you can't do, do anything. anything about it. Wait so, till Tuesday. So take a tip. <laughs> go home for the yeah. weekend flat. Yeah. Don't, don't go home holding a no, position. No. That would not be a smart Not a good move. idea. Cheers. And on that note, cheers. Bye-bye. Have a great week.